Calling Space Control. Satellite SJ-1 ready for scheduled report. Satellite SJ-1 ready for scheduled report. Over. Space Control to SJ-1. Space Control to SJ-1. We read you. Come, please. Space Control. Space Control. Come in, please. Come in, please. Something's approaching us. Space Control. Space Control. Come in, please. Look at that. Ayo, get out of the SOS right away. We're being attacked. Prepare Come in, hurry. Space, space control. Bring Come it. on, radar and radar. Control. Everyone on action. Come in, please. Space, space control. Immediately. Two minutes late. We'll have to make it up. on your Tokyo television news this morning. They are both unexplainable events. And now, for an even more curious news story, we switch you to our reporter in America. This is your announcer, Thomas Sheldon, with a special we picked off the wire from New York. The American freighter, Blue Queen, was passing through the Panama Canal when she was destroyed by a water spot, which left her a pile of twisted junk draped on the side of the canal. The cause of this catastrophe is quite unknown. Buongiorno, signore, signore. We, Rai TV, Radio Televisione Italiana. And while you hear my voice, this announcer in Venice, Italy, is telling his public about a similar occurrence this morning. 
A powerful water spout lifted tons of water from the canals of the city, flooding and destroying many age-old monuments. And in order to investigate these mysterious events, the World Council has called an emergency conference to be held at the Space Research Center in Tokyo. Derricates from various member nations are scheduled to arrive this morning. of the circumstances resulting from these three disasters that there was a common force at work in each instance. The fact that the survivors were severely frostbitten is of particular significance, indicating that extremely low temperatures were somehow produced. Now, what does this imply? Simply that by rapidly lowering the temperature of a certain object, its gravity would also be decreased. But isn't it impossible to remove gravity from a stationary object or certain place. Yes, you are right. You see, it's been considered impossible up to now. But now it has happened right here on Earth. And my colleagues, Dr. Adachi and Major Katsumiya, have a brief analysis of some very interesting data on this subject, which I will ask them to explain to you. As you know, the cause of gravity is the motion of atoms. And when the atoms of an object have no movement, its gravity is correspondingly diminished. At the temperature known as absolute zero, the atomic movement of an object is reduced to a state of rest, and it becomes weightless. Owing to the centrifugal force of the revolving Earth itself, the object thus affected would rise up into the air. We are sure that the recent disasters were caused by an operation from space of some sort of freeze ray which, by reducing temperatures abruptly, was able to destroy the gravity Are you all right? of the object. Don't effect. worry, it's all right. Hello, Doctor Ahmed. Has the conference ended? Now, what's this? It's Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Ahmed, where is he? He was right there. <clears throat> well, he isn't there now. You must be seeing things. Ahmed's at the conference with everybody else. But I'm sure he was right there. Oh, there you are. Iwamura. Yeah. Get the heat ray gun set up. Firing test. Okay. Say, Katsumiya. Hmm? I think Etsuko's a little overtired. Try to cheer her up, huh? <laughs> to admit that just as we can go from Earth to the planets, there must be other beings whose intelligence is superior to ours, who've solved the problems of space better than we have. Dr. Adachi, what do you think their purpose is in coming to the Earth? 
Wouldn't you say they came here impelled by the same kind of scientific curiosity we might feel about them? Could it be they plan to conquer the people of Earth? I only wish I knew the answers to these questions, gentlemen. I couldn't care to guess what the future holds, though I'm sure we all hope that this is a peaceful visit. Unfortunately, we do not understand their language. But we should, by all means possible, continue to urge peace. On the other hand, however, we should also study measures to repulse them if attacked. I hereby declare that this meeting is adjourned. Inspector Ariati of the International Police. Gentlemen, this is our new ray gun. It produces a narrow band energy radiation of the order of 600 megatherms. At maximum output, it will fire continuously for 20,000 hours with a single charge of plutonium. We have lined up a series of targets composed of beryllium-19, which is, as you are no doubt aware, the hardest metal produced here on Earth. At present, this same alloy is being used for the skin of the SPEEP-1, which is now under construction. We're ready, Doctor. All right, please stand back, gentlemen. gentlemen, are the results of the test firing you have witnessed. These are our spaceships, the Speeps. Were they built in accordance with our original design? Why, yes, exactly. Why, do you find something wrong? No, I think they're wonderful. I have to confess I am quite surprised. I didn't think you could build them so quickly. Well, we didn't do it alone. All the nations in the world did it. Well, it's marvelous all the same. Congratulations, Doctor. Yes, yes, Congratulations, Doctor. This way, gentlemen. This Congrats. way. This way. mainly concerned with adjusting the instruments and controls inside the ships. Actual firing is just a question of time now. What is the deviation on the wave motion index? Well, here. I was just checking the figures on that, Professor. It's one to 100,000 in the atmosphere and one to one million in outer space. Kogudi, are you ready? Ready. Would you connect all the meter leads from the engine room to the master control? Thank you. You got it. Ready. Now I'll test the motor on speed number one.
I am Inspector Ariaki, International Police. I wonder if you can give me some information. Oh, yes, of course. I'm looking for Dr. Ahmed. Can you help me find him? I believe so. He's around here somewhere. Will you find him at once for me, then, please? There are reasons for my haste, which I can't explain at the moment. Dr. Ahmed? He isn't here, Doctor. He didn't come with us. Where is he, then? <laughs> Yamik! Yamik! There's something wrong in the gun room. What's going on here? Stop that. The ray gun. I caught him. He was trying to steal it. Man, is that true? How could you? You're under arrest. Come with me. to get me, eh? Well, come on. Come it's all of you. Eventually, you'll be our slaves. The whole life will become a colonial satellite for our glorious planet, Natal. Hamid, no, don't. Wait. Get back. All of you. Get back. Here are the pictures. It's some kind of radio control apparatus. How atrocious. Implanted in Armie's brain, it would make him respond to radio wave impulses. It is clear that the inhabitants of the planet Natal have established an advanced base on our moon and they are planning to attack the Earth from this base. Mankind has lived on the Earth for the past 500,000 years. Now he must be prepared to resist the attacks of the interplanetary bandits of outer space. We are going to send two spaceships to the moon. Dr. Atachi, the eminent scientist, will command the crew of the first ship. <laughs> Dr. Richardson will command the crew of the second ship. <laughs> and now for the details of the flight. Dr. Atachi, will you tell us something about that? Well, of course, we have to consider this as just a reconnaissance flight. We expect to land at a point uh, 100 kilometers north of the Sea of Rains. Our radio telescopes indicate that mysterious radio signals are being transmitted from that area.
isn't it beautiful? Mm-hmm. <sighs> and there are creatures up there about to attack us. I know. Mm. Yes. But it looks more beautiful when you imagine that there's a, a prince waiting up there who's going to come down and carry you away forever. I think that we humans will gradually lose such feelings of beauty. Oh. Oh. Katsumiya, isn't there one thing that will always be the same? Hmm? There must be one thing. Mm -hmm. Don't you understand what I mean? Mm. But there's one thing that we'll never lose. We'll always love each other, no matter what happens. On the Earth or on the Moon. Well, I guess... You know... I wonder... <gasps> no. I won't let... It just can't. Our love will never change. Say that you love me forever. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I was just teasing you. <laughs> Wait, be careful, darling. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And the way you were making your sweetheart cry, I worry about that. Uh-huh. Ah, you were spying, huh? Oh, all right. Let's all go to town. How would you like that? Mm. Where? Where? I'd like to have some fun. There won't be any in the moon, I know. <laughs> you can be sure of that. <laughs> That's right. So before we go, I'd like to go kiss the girls goodbye. Do you want to come along? Why not? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm doing all right here. Watch out for that guy, it's gone. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go by myself. See you later. Bye. See you later. can't park your car here. Huh? Ah, oh, look now. What's wrong with you? Your forehead's bleeding. What happened? Huh? There's a tremendous crowd here today. 
waiting for that moment when a brilliant new chapter will be recorded in the annals of mankind. Far across the spacious grounds of the Science Center, I can see the two spaceships standing silently on their launching pads, waiting for the moment when they will carry aloft the hopes of the entire world. Commander of the first ship will be Professor Richardson, while Dr. Adashi commands the second ship. Each crew consists of nine specialized technicians. The launching pad. The cars have stopped, and the crews are now about to enter the elevators and the gantries. The fueling of the ships has been completed. Everything is in readiness for the takeoff. In a few moments, the countdown will begin, and our two spaceships will blast off for the moon. Everything is ready, sir. Thank you. Please be seated, gentlemen. Report when ready for pre-flight checkout procedures. Let him know that we are ready. We are ready and starting countdown. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Would you request a report from number two ship? You can say the second speep is ready. We are ready and counting. Fueling completed. Fueling number one completed also. Remove gantry. Ignite your primary burners on your own command. Ignite your primary burners on your own command. First stage, full power. Full power. Pouring safeties released.
Start space procedures. Space procedure. Reduce thrust to zero. Thrust to zero. Well, gentlemen, looks like it's a success. Oh, that's oh, that's good. Good. Thank you. 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 You can release your belt now. Oh, 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 <laughs> you have to remember there's no gravity on this ship. Yes, sir. You've got to be careful. Huh? <laughs> Put everyone on space procedure. Space procedure, well, everyone. Doesn't this weightless feeling feel strange, Sylvia? It certainly does, Roger. Calling speed number two. Come in, please. I want your cruising report. Over. Speed number two, calling speed number one. Skin temperature 361. Normal fuel consumption, everything okay. Space radar ready and go. Space radar number one, space radar number one. Unidentified object bearing 321, second quadrant. This is radar two. We have unidentified object on same bearing. What is it, Doctor? Are they enemy saucers? We can't be sure yet. Check it on the space scope. Very well, sir. Get that scope out. 321, second quadrant. Second quadrant. Scope power on. Power on, sir. It's what's left of the satellite. Mm. Let us say a prayer for them. At 42 hours, the present position of our speed is 306,000 kilometers, and the attraction is 0.17. Good. How far to the moon? 10 more hours at the current rate. It's 70,000 kilometers to the moon. Mm. I get a signal from the moon. And radar, how about it? I don't have anything. What's wrong? Iwamura! Iwamura! What's wrong with him? Hey, I've got something here. Two pips. I've got them on the space scope too, sir. into us. Get the ray gun ready. Ray gun. Ready, sir. What could they be? Some sort of guided missile. Keep tracking closely and fire when they're in range. Very good, sir. Throw the ray gun. It's ready, sir. 
This is beep number two. We are prepared to give battle. Contact! happened to Iwamura? Yes, sir. More raiders coming in. I got him on the scope, and there are two saucers behind him. I can't locate the trouble. What's happened to your power? Check the oscilloscope. We'll have to switch over to the auxiliary generator. What's wrong, number two? What's wrong? They're going to ram you. They're going to ram you. <laughs> it's no use, Doctor. Prepare for evasive action. Very good. Get tied down. Stop in, everybody, for lateral thrust. Right rocket ports open. Full thrust, Doctor. And strap in. Correct our deviation at once. Yes, sir. And find out what happened to that ray gun generator. Yes, sir. Get the controls off the line. Over. Pull over. Oh! What happened to him? Oh, caught up. What's wrong with him? I caught him working on the ray gun generator. He was shutting off the power. <gasps> what? Put him here till he wakes up. Men are fools. We warn you, do not approach the moon. Do not approach the moon. If you do, you will surely die. Dr. Richardson, did you hear that? Of course I did, but we can't very well turn back. I agree with you that we must persevere. To turn back now would mean complete defeat. Well, Earthman, we repeat our warning. Do you want to die? Obey our command and return to Earth. To your stations, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're running back to their moon base. Hada. Yes, sir. Iwamura seems to be in shock. Try to make him comfortable, at least. Right. We're in the moon's gravity field now. Start your reverse! Full reverse thrust. Stop and turn around. How can I? We'll be a perfect target for those enemy missiles. I know that. Notify number two. 
Hello, number two. We're going to reverse propellant. Hold on. This is Adachi, Professor. The fate of the entire world depends on us. We must proceed with our landing on the moon. Roger. Uh, excuse me, sir. In order to escape radar detection, we'd better land as close as possible to the mountain in section six. Yes, you're right. We are changing our point of impact to the east side of the mountain in section six. Do you agree? Over. Very well, then. The east side of the mountain in section six. Over. Roger, over and out. Landing stations. He's out of harm's way now. Good. Strap in. Yes, sir. Rate of descent, zero. Azimuth, one zero. Oh. We are directly above the mountain. Attitude, down and slow. Roger. Reverse attitude. Our approach angle is 109. Increased thrust, 10 G. down. Secure the ship and prepare to land. Cut your turbines, Okada. Okada. Sir? Make sure Yuamura can't do any harm. Do you want me to tie him up? It would be better for everyone, All right? Check your oxygen, Esco. Don't worry, I checked it. It's all right. Turn around, Okada. Let me check yours. I think it's all right, isn't it? Looks in good shape. Just a minute. Check the radio. Radio working all right? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Very well, then. Let's go. Dr. Adachi, what was the matter with Iwamura? He's a victim of the enemy's brainwave. We have to leave him here.
welcome. You have to be careful. I told you about that. The gravity here is much less than it is on Earth. Yes. I remember now. Well, Dr. Adachi, we finally made it. Yes, we finally did. But our work is just beginning now. We've got to find where those flying saucers are coming from so we can destroy them. So good hunting, and let's keep together. We're ready. Wake up. Wake up. You haven't completed your mission yet. Wake up. Observation dome. Ground car to speed one. Is everything in order? Everything in order here, sir. Listen well, Your mission is to blow up these spaceships. You must blow them up. Do it quickly. <laughs> watching us now. Be careful. Right. Get number two car. Yes, sir. Did you see the flying saucers? Yes, we just saw them now. They seem to be following us. Be careful. Don't worry, we will. Doctor. Hello, Professor. station hidden on the other side of those mountains. Yes. 
The only thing is, we'll have to find out where it is. We better go on foot. We'll have to leave the cars here and go on foot to search for the enemy base. Reactor working, radar working. <coughs> How much further is it? I don't know. Let me see. Here's where we are. Another thousand yards. Careful, everyone. Look in there. This must go right through the mountain. There must be an entrance to the enemy base. They'll have it guarded. No doubt about that. Oh, goody. Go bring up the number one car. Okay.
base from which they plan to launch their attack on Earth. And we must destroy it. It doesn't seem to be completed yet. There must be some way to destroy it if we could only find out how. Doctor, let me try to sneak in. That's out of the question. I could destroy at least a part of it. He's right, and I want to go with him. The longer we wait here, the less chance we have of succeeding. Let me go with him. Let's go. Tell Kogori to get that heat ray cannon up here right away. All right. And be careful, please. I will. Gonna move in on their base now, all right, Doctor? No, not yet. Wait until the heat ray cannon gets here.
Get in there. Come on. Let's go. What happened to those saucers that flew away? Uh, well, there isn't very much to worry about there with their home base destroyed. I only hope they don't get to our ships before we do. The air pressure's dropping. You're right. 23, 2, 1, 20, 19. We're going down. Behind that pickup ahead there. Hurry! 
Everybody, come on, come on. Get them in quickly. Come on, come on. Come on, hurry. Come on, hurry. Hurry Wait for me. Come on, hurry. All here, sir. You fought well, Gregory. Thank you, sir. Back to the ships. Quickly. Can you contact either ship? No one answers. Why they didn't wreck the other one? Maybe they were driven off. Doctor, what do you think could have become of Iomara? I don't know, but I doubt if he's alive. You men investigate the ship carefully. Yes, sir. Prepare the elevator to hoist the car aboard. But above all, be careful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here they come. Get inside, quick. Kogori! Take cover. Run! Iwamura had to die to help us get away. Mm. No, we can never bring him back. But now we can fight. An explosion accompanied the return of the surviving spaceship to the Earth. An explosion that was to rock the course of humanity and change the entire Earth into a fighting organism with but one single point of view. All over the world, people of all nations flocked together to seek safety in a common union. They insisted that their leaders should all work together against this common enemy and for the defense of the Earth. From country to country, the cry was taken up and it echoed across the surface of the Earth until it was heard in the halls of the United Nations. We must check, by every means at our disposal, the barbarous ambitions of the Natal spacemen. 
They are bound to fall upon us with renewed attack after reinforcing their base. Doctor, can you estimate how big a lead they have over us in their space technique? Well, theirs is quite advanced when compared to ours, at least from the time viewpoint. While their theoretical knowledge may not be very far ahead of ours, it is clear that we should be ready to resist their attack in the best way we can. I suggest that the small scouting craft we now have undergoing trials should be armed and converted into fighter ships to intercept the attacking saucers outside our atmosphere. Gentlemen, we are at war with the planet Natal. I'm sure each and every one of us agrees that diplomatic procedures can be bypassed in the present emergency, and we should mobilize. An emergency order for the construction of fighter rockets was issued to all advanced factories throughout the world. Day and night, men and machines struggled to complete production schedules in time. The fate of the world hung in the balance. On the cold Siberian plains, fighter rocket bases mushroomed into growth to be followed quickly by similar launching sites on the plains of Texas and at the Science Center base in Japan. Unidentified object approaching from fourth sector, range 8,000 miles. Then we'll put him right about here. Stay with him on red alert. Yes, sir, red alert. Check on Siberia. Siberia here. In Texas, is it ready? Ready in Texas. Ready in Tokyo? calling Russia over. Emmerman speaking. My first fighter squadron is now taking off. We've done our best, Professor. There really isn't much more to say. It better work the first time. We won't be able to send anyone else out. That's so. Rocket one, come in, please. Over. Cruising in East Sector. Objects approaching on course. Looks like it might be the enemy. We're moving in to investigate. It's a large force of enemy saucers. They are escorting a mothership with space torpedoes. We are going in after them. An all-out offensive. Attention, emergency. Enemy forces are approaching. All defense units report to East Sector to repel invaders. Five, four, prepare to launch. Three, two, one. Zero.
Group B, altitude 4,000 kilometers. We'll rendezvous in 30 seconds. This is the captain of the reinforcement group. Altitude 5,000 kilometers. I have the enemy in sight and am preparing to attack. That is all. Get them. They fired a space torpedo at Earth. must leave your sector and go after them and destroy the torpedoes. Right. The mothership has gotten through. Escorted by six saucers. Get them. You have them on the space radar? Yes, sir. They're in the second sector on a gradual approach. We will track. Don't let them get away. We will hold them, sir.
Mothership is approaching Tokyo with escort. Mothership is approaching Tokyo with escort. Reporting. We have destroyed the bulk of the enemy fleet with two exceptions, the mother ship and one saucer. Keep out of the way, then. We'll take over now. Enemy coordinates are 30 degrees north of the space terminal and seven miles high. Recon ready? Stand by. Reporting. We are very low on fuel and we must return to base. It's up to you now. The enemy saucer and mothership are nearing your position. Over. Well done, Group A. Katsumiya. <gasps> Prepare to fire. I mean, contact. Here's a report from Space Radar Search, Commander. No indication of further enemy activity. Well, Commander, looks like you really pulled it off. Well, gentlemen, I guess we really showed them a thing or two. Dr. Adachi, we did it! Oh, 
Hold on, Major. You. Commander, here's the Colonel's son. Well, hello there, what big fellow. Well, come on now. Listen, Papa, how many enemy soldiers were there? Well, you can read all about it in the paper. Well, goodbye, Commander. Goodbye, and have a nice trip. Uh huh? You can terminate the alert. Yes, sir. I will give the order. All stations, the alert is over. Conditions green. That's Mia. I'd like you to come along with me. I'm going to talk to the rocket pilots. Right, sir. Let's go. I know. I expect to go along. Yes, yes, yes.